The Civil War Diaries and Letters Transcription Project is an offshoot of the Civil War Digital Collection, which is itself a part of the Iowa Digital Library, a repository of half a million objects from the holdings of the UI Libraries and its campus partners. Our goal with IDL is not only to give these artifacts a permanent home online, but also to make them easier to find and use. This is achieved by assigning standardized metadata in the form of descriptive text and controlled vocabulary headings that provide intellectual access to the content of the items. For typeset materials, the metadata is further enhanced through the process of OCR scanning that creates an underlying text file to enable full text searching. However, with handwritten documents such as the thousands of pages in our Civil War collection, there hasn't been an easy and affordable way to provide comparable access. When it comes to browsing and searching for information, there's little improvement over consulting the physical artifacts. The digital versions require the same time-consuming work to decipher the text page by page, with each researcher repeating this effort from scratch. Libraries have traditionally lacked the resources to manually add transcripts on the necessary scale, but this has begun to change with the development of social media tools enabling user-contributed content for crowdsourced textual analysis projects. Two of the most successful examples are the National Library of Australia's site for correcting OCR text from historic newspapers and the Guardian Newspapers Project to review Parliament members' expense reports. With a few libraries in the U.S. conducting crowdsourcing experiments on a smaller scale, the Special Collections Department here approached us to ask what it would take to launch a project for Civil War transcripts. When we did some research and replied that we'd need about $50,000 in major grant funds or a year or two until one of the funded efforts trickled down into an open source tool, Special Collections then counteroffered no money and not much time, so instead we put together our site, which we created by mostly bypassing the programming component. Instead, our webmaster put together some PHP code to pull scanned images and metadata from the digital collections and combine them with a web form in which users can type the transcripts. Submitting the form generates an email delivered to a departmental inbox, which a library staff member reviews, enters in the page level metadata record through our digital asset management system, runs an index, and then the data is live and available for search and display. That's all quite a few more steps than is ideal, but since the inefficiencies are largely hidden from the user, we decided to proceed anyway, despite reservations from staff members who felt that such a mediated system might not scale. Some staff also expressed concerns about the quality of submissions, and this issue actually showed up later on a Chronicles of Higher Education blog post about the project, with some commenters arguing that the masses weren't qualified to do, do the work since they lacked the necessary historical background, others responding that imperfect access was better than none at all, and still others arguing the primacy of user engagement over data enhancement. So reservations aside, we launched the project in the spring, sent out a press release, and waited for the crowds to show up. When they didn't, we continued to promote the site among historians and caught a break in early June when the American Historical Association featured it on their blog. Then the next morning, we received a message from reddit.com, a social media news site, suggesting that we increase our bandwidth since they'd be featuring our project in a post titled, Things I Learned, How to Participate in History While Sitting on My Ass by Transcribing Civil War Diaries Online. We didn't know enough to take this advice seriously until a few hours later when our servers were completely overwhelmed by Reddit users. By the end of the day, our web stats had increased about 7,000%, shutting down not only the transcription site and the Civil War Digital Collection, but also the entire Iowa Digital Library. Things have calmed down quite a bit since then to a smaller but steady level of submissions. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback from our users who have nearly completed the diaries, so we recently added over 5,800 pages of correspondence to the transcription site. Expanding beyond soldiers' diary entries to include the accounts of friends and families who wrote the letters gives users a fuller view of life during the war. And it also provides a new challenge for those who have mastered cursive transcription and are ready for interleaved and upside down cursive. We plan to expand these efforts further in the coming months to create a crowdsourcing collections at Iowa umbrella site that will feature transcription for handwritten documents outside of the Civil War collections. We've also been experimenting with adding some of our historic photos to Flickr for user-generated commenting and tagging. The 
This is something that the Library of Congress has had great success with through their Flickr Commons initiative. We're currently on a long wait list of libraries looking to get into the Commons, so in the meantime, we're proceeding on our own. We haven't done any promotion yet, but with only a quarter of the images in Flickr, we've had more than four times the view counts compared to the library website versions, and users have already begun to attach missing information, historical context, and personal remembrances to the images. We plan to work with the Alumni Relations Department to put out a call for volunteers to inc increase this public engagement. And finally, we're looking to do more outreach locally here on campus. Special Collections recently completed a search for an outreach and instruction librarian, a new position here in the libraries. We now have someone in place who is available for presentations or workshops to support the use of research collections in the curriculum. So if you have questions about that or anything else I've talked about, you can email me or Digital Library Services or Special Collections and my slides are available online. Thank you.